Hello there, I'm Black Bright News and I am hailing from England, east of England to be precise, and I am going to talk about Zozi Beanie Tunzi. She won Miss Universe, a South African of all. How ironic, South African. When you think South Africa was a place of apartheid, where whites were segregated, where segregated themselves from blacks. They disadvantaged them economically and politically, cast them to one side as inferior. And just look, all nationalities have voted for South Africa, Zozi Bini Tunzi, to be Miss Universe, a global ambassador for the world. So let me just show you um, a short video. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it is a long interview, but I just wanted to show you how important and the change we're actually witnessing with regard to our colour. Year of milestones in the world of beauty pageants. For the first time in history, Miss World, Miss America, Miss Universe, Miss USA and Miss Teen USA are all black women. Joining me now is Miss Universe, Zozivini Tunzi. Uh, she said I could call her Zozi for short, so I think I'm going to do that. Zozi, thank you so much. Congratulations on your win. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. So before we talk about your victory, I want to ask about something that you said in your closing address on Sunday when you were on stage. You said, quote, I grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me with my kind of skin and my kind of hair was never considered beautiful. I think it is time that stops today. Growing up in South Africa, what were the messages that were sent about the standards of beauty and what was considered beautiful? You know, I think it's just opening up a magazine, paging through it and not seeing women who look like me, switching on TV and not seeing women who look like me. So I think there was just a lack of representation growing up whenever they mentioned beautiful women. I never really, you know, picked up on women who, who looked like me. And I think I just really grew up in a society where um, colorism was such a big issue. And, you know, the furthest you are away from light skin, the furthest away you are from beauty. And so I felt it was so important for me to say that because I knew there were women who related to it. And I knew it more especially that there were little girls as well who, you know, would relate to it. And, and um, it was such a special moment for me because I really wanted to get that message across. And in fact, during the competition, you were advised Yes, so um, I think it's just wonderful. She was also advised to wear a wig, which she refused because she said she wouldn't be accepting a part of herself. And you know the beauty about that is the fact that not only is she dark skinned, but she has her natural hair. And when, well, when I was growing up, the, the only black person or the only black image that we saw were gollywogs on a bottle of jam. And golly works were a, pit, were a bit like the pickaninnies. They were really black. They were black like this. And they had big red lips. And they had pulpy eyes and spiky hair. And that was our image of what a black person looked like. And so, you know, and that compounded by the fact that we didn't have any representation of black people on the TV or in the magazines. Did gate, we had nothing to gauge ourselves by, apart from images like that, derogatory images. So it is wonderful, beautiful, ah, uh, excellent. I can't even think of the adjectives to describe the way I feel when that Zozi has won and she's um, a woman looking after gender equality, um, she's against gender-based violence, she's against femicide, femicide is where men kill women based on their gender, and she just wants gender equality, and some people might say, what's she talking about, gender equality, Aren't, don't women have enough equality as it is, look at what women's lib has done for them, but what they are forgetting is that gender equality or women equality or female equality, you know, arose by any other name, has not been accepted. It's been, it hasn't been embraced. 
Black women, they shun women who are powerful. They criticize them. They denounce them. And they're threatened by them a lot of the time. A lot of black men who see black women who have a little something, something, they look at them and treat them with contempt. They don't accept them. It's almost like, you know, why should I help you? Why should I do anything for you? You ask for women's lib. You've got women's lib. You get on with it. So as black women who have reached a certain stage in our lives, whether we've worked hard for it, whether we've got it through academics, however way we have achieved a certain level where we feel a sense of stability, a black man will usually, not all of them, of course not, you've got plenty of black intelligent men who know how to embrace a black woman who is confident. But likewise, the majority see black women as a threat. And if they, if they cannot talk to them or if they cannot accept their opinion or their criticism or their feedback, they thump them down. So, Don Zunzi, she is actually um, advocating against that. What she is saying is that black men shouldn't be threatened by black women in power or black leaders because they are not a threat to your masculinity. They're actually an asset to your masculinity. She didn't say those exact words, but more or less, that is what she was saying. She was saying that men should be more tender and softer and more caring. But instead, you have these bullish, um, pe bullish men who go around thinking the world owes them a favour and women are to blame when they're not where they should be. So it is an absolute, um, oh, I don't even know what the word is, but it's wonderful that she has won. Apparently, she did apply in 2017 and she didn't win. She was a runner up then. And she went back 2019 and won. She was also Miss South Africa. But the interesting thing is that she said it wasn't her time. Back then, it wasn't her time. She said two years later now, she's learned so much. She's got so much to offer. And I think when you compete in a race or any kind of competition, never see it as a failure when you become a runner up. Always see it as, what can I learn from this? What can I learn in between the time I try again? You know, Einstein was the one with the lights and said, you know, it's never, you can have a thousand failures and it's not a thousand failures. It's a thousand ways of learning to do things better. And that's how you should look on yourself. When things are, when you don't win, just look at yourself and think, what can I do better? Look at who won and think to yourself, what did she say? How did she say it? How did she present herself? Because a lot of times people think, oh, well, my question, you know, they have the five questions. My question was just as good as hers. But there might have been something. She might have had the edge. She might have had something else that people saw or people that can identify with. And when you think the majority of voters will be women, a leader who is going to advocate for women is going to get a lot of votes. And from what I heard from the top five, um, she was the only one that spoke about advocating solely for women. And Tony and Singh had the same goal, if you remember. She she was um, she um, uh, qualified in women's studies. So women. You have to, you know, women and where women are going, not only black women, but women generally. It's an important time for us. There's a reason why we're rising. There's a, you know, God must have a master plan. Maybe think people think it's men that are going to run the world. Men that are going to um, take over and do this and do that and get that get the world in a place where um, it's going to be better. But maybe it does take a female, that maternal instinct. Because when you think about men, it's mostly about their ego and their arrogance and their pride. And so sometimes that gets in the way of being a fair leader 
or somebody who can make a change. So big up, big up um, Zazabini Tunzi. What else did I want to say? Um, also, it's ironic. Is this going? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm telling you something. I, I thought I was I was talking about 20 minutes the first time and it wasn't even recording. So you can imagine I was quite devastated. This won't be as good, but hey, it'll be good enough. And sometimes good enough is just enough. Um, yes, yeah, so it was also ironic that she's from South Africa, the place of apartheid, the place where they sanctioned racial segregation and political and economic discrimination against non-whites. She grew up in that kind of climate where black people were seen as inferior. So it's even more important why a woman from South Africa is Miss Universe. She's got a lot to teach us, peeps, a lot to teach us. Um, she reminds me a bit of Iman, the Somalian um, fashion model who married David Bowie. Something about her features, her elongated features. But a very, very beautiful woman. And like I said, you know, she's at, she's talking about racial, um, um, the racial segregation. Um, what else did she say? Um... Oh, yeah. She wants to defy colorism, racism, discrimination. And when you think about colorism, colorism is racism within a race. It's where dark people are treated as though they're not as good or as beautiful as the lighter skinned. And so this is another kick in the teeth. And all of those bleachers, all of those women who bleached because they felt the lighter skin was more beautiful. How do you feel now? Putting your skin in jeopardy, your lives in danger to be lighter because you feel lighter is beautiful. And look, what does Zonzabini Tunza tell you about beauty? Beauty is more than the colour of your skin. It's about what's within. And if you are going to... Um, identify with a colour in order to feel beautiful, you're going to have problems like bleaching and wanting to bleach and feeling that bleach makes you look beautiful when it makes you look like duppy. It doesn't look good. It's not a good look. Black women and black men who have bleached, it's almost like there's a veil over their face. It's not attractive. There's no coloration there's it's just bleached everything out so zunzi will teach people like the bleachers that you don't have to bleach your skin to be beautiful teach young girls who are growing up who may have thought about bleaching their skin that you don't have to bleach your skin to be beautiful educate yourself you know, have an opinion, be, con be, con be confident enough to speak that opinion in a respectful and diplomatic way. A lot of people talk about, oh, you, you, you sweet it up, you, you, you nice it up too much. But if it's going to be effective to more people, then that is what you do, whatever, because we all have goals, we all have something to offer the world. And it's no point putting your point across in a gruff way that's going to appeal to a minority when you can tone it down and make it a bit more acceptable and appeal to masses. Where do you then have the most influence? So yes, I think it will... Um, Zozi, she went on Shay's Universe program and um, she was so down to earth it, and speaking to the people who called her. It was absolutely amazing. And it's amazing how winners attract winners. Michelle Obama's um, tweeted her. Oprah Winfrey has tweeted her. And she said, you know, a few months ago, five months ago, and she was an intern. She would not never have believed that somebody like Oprah Winfrey or Michelle Obama would have spoken to her. And it's a shame that you have to reach a certain level before you can engage with similar women of power. But women of power getting together will make a powerful combination. 
they can make some massive changes. And these are women with money too. So, and I was wondering why Miss USA was living in, no, sorry, Miss Universe as a South African was moving to USA. And I thought, why isn't she living in South Africa to give all of those, her indigenous people, hope and, you know, hope and dreams, for, you know, help them to hope, fulfill their hopes and dreams. But I didn't realise that Miss Universe was actually put on by USA and therefore one of the conditions probably is that you live in the country for a few years as a, as a part of the agreement. So, yeah, I think she'll make a tremendous, um, I think she'll be very influential. Um, it's only a pity she's gone to America when it's so cold and when the, um, the political climate is so dodgy. But hey, you know, she's where she should be at this particular place and time. And like she said, she was meant to win this year as opposed to two years ago because now she can make a difference. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, I think, oh yeah. It's the first time in history, apparently, where the five top pageants have been black. The winners of the five top pageants have been black. So we have Miss Universe, we have Miss World, we have Miss America, we have Miss USA, although I don't know what the difference is between Miss America and Miss USA is. And then we have Miss Teen USA, and they were all black winners. And I have wondered to myself, I wonder what a white runner-up would feel like losing to a black woman. Somebody who they've been, who they may have been raised to believe that black people are inferior and less beautiful. I wonder what goes through their minds at that point. Do they come to the realisation that maybe I was taught wrong, maybe I was miseducated? Or do they just see it as a competition? Okay, it doesn't matter what colour that person is, I just lost and I'll try to do better the next time. It was just something that I was curious about. If anybody is out there who would like to answer that question, I'd be very curious to know. But it is good to know that, you know, blackness is being accepted and acknowledged. Black beauty is being accepted and acknowledged and not just by black people, because like I said, the voters are across the board. So for her to win Miss Universe, that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, let me see, all eyes are on her now. She was raised to feel that she wasn't good enough and look at it. Just look how the, ta the, ta the table has turned. Um, she says we're all more alike than we are different. Um, moving away from racism, bigotry, discrimination. We're reaching a point where we're acknowledged and accept accepted. And like I said, you know, we are more um, alike than we are different. It's the media and the powers that be want to make us feel as though everyone is different. So it helps them to control the masses better. If you believe that a black person is inferior, then you're going to feel as, you know, they're going to have much more power on their sides. But when you think about um, this universe being black, and being chosen by white people as well as black people and other races. It does tell you that where we were in history, ruling, winning, creators, inventors, the best of the best, it's, 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 it's fulfilling itself again. Prophecy is fulfilling itself. You know, history made the modern white person believe that black people were the bottom of the barrel, that they'd always been slaves. They never ever showed them in history books that they were kings, that they were queens, that they were rulers. They never ever showed that. But what's happening indirectly by seeing people like Usain Bolt, Tony Ann Singh and all of these um, be women, beauty, winners of beauty pageants who are black. It's showing that, yeah, maybe what these people have been telling us about our history is true. Because how come all of a sudden these pe black people are showing up as the best at everything? 
Because that is what this is saying. It's saying that we are the best. And not only of a little um, town, but of the world, of the universe, of a country like um, America that has over 333 million, I think, people living in it, population. That's what this is saying. So maybe people will start revisiting the history books and have a look at where black people were, what they did, what they achieved, what they're capable of achieving. And this is why some of the white people, the minority of white people in power, try to perpetuate the negative stereotype because they don't want people to know that. They don't want to know that black people are good at anything. They want people to think that black people are only good at crime, having babies, not getting married. That's what they want black, white people to think about black people, that they're aggressors, that they're thieves, that they're criminals, they belong in prison, that they're deportees, murderers. That's what the image they want to portray of black women or black people. But, Go back into your history book, folks. And all what's happening now is showing the world where black people can be and where they are if given the opportunity. A lot of black people haven't been given an opportunity. Why they haven't been given an opportunity is because white people were afraid of this, afraid of black people winning. And like I said, I'm not saying this to gloat. I'm just saying this because it's true. So, um, even me, I was raised to feel as though I wasn't good enough. I was taking the piss off because of my lips. My eyes were pulpy. My head was nappy and picky. But like I said, whether you wear a wig or not, like I've said in several videos, people wear it for different reasons. Some for health, some for convenience, some for arrogance. Some do feel as though it is a Western mindset and they're doing it because they think long hair makes them look more beautiful and more acceptable in society. But people have different reasons and none of them have to do with, well, some of them don't have to do with whether or not you're happy with your natural self. Um, all women, we enhance ourselves in whichever way we can. Um, okay, so let me see. I think I have covered everything. Yeah. I think I have. I hope it works. And like I said, I think I said, but because I did the video before, I'm just going to repeat this. If I did say it before, then forgive me. I wanted to show her sense of humour. Um, she was asked, what would be the first question you asked God when you touched down in heaven? And what she said was, where's the buffet? And that's all for now. And oh, big up, big up, big up, big time. Zozi, Zozi Bini Tunze, and of course, her sister, Tony Ann Singh. That's all for now. Bye-bye.